Well, it's that time of year again. I suppose I better keep this whole scary video thing going, you know, for a series. Only not with as much editing and effects as there was the first time I did a series like this. Do not have the time or patience for that anymore. Oh yeah, that's weird. I don't know, it's been two years. That's about as long as it took for that distracted boyfriend meme to die. This is a public service announcement. Do not attempt to change the channel. Huh? It has come to our attention that numerous reports have been made of mysterious video games appearing in people's homes. These video games contain gore and gratuitous violence. In the interest of public safety and to prevent the violence that playing such games will inevitably lead to, we urge you to report all such findings to the police immediately. Where did you get that? The government has determined that playing such violent video games can cause violent behaviour from the players themselves. We're hearing tragic reports from Greater London, where a young Daniel Ibbotson, just eight years old, discovered a copy of Night Trap on the Mega CD, which sent him into a violent spiralling rampage. And spare a thought for his poor childhood friend Larry Garfunkel Bundy Jr who found a copy of Mortal Kombat for the Mega Drive and innocently entered the code to unlock the blood. And what about young Peter Lee of Norwich, who tried to stream his copy of Seventh Guest via Twitch? I dare not even speak of what happened that evening. If one of these video games is to appear at your house, do not play it. Right, so playing a violent video game will then make me violent. I suppose I better not risk it. I'm gonna play it just a little bit. Soft and Cuddly was released on the ZX Spectrum only in 1987, developed by John George Jones, who had previously developed the 1985 Spectrum game Go To Hell. Go To Hell is unremarkable, but it's pretty much the game version of what every 12-year-old metalhead scribbles on their English folder thinking it might scare the teacher. Ooh, so edgy. Soft and Cuddly was published by The Powerhouse, the budget arm of software company CRL, now known for having published some mediocre and awful games. Most famously, they were responsible for the entirely unusable Spectrum port of the C64 game Squidge, which I covered last year. Still getting therapy for it. So why not add to the backlog of things I need to talk to my therapist about by playing Soft and Cuddly? Ooh, ah. Who's Soft and Cuddly here? Do you mean this guy? I don't think you mean this guy. Doesn't look too snuggly altogether. Unless what we're looking at is a cuddle party gone awry. Yes, those really are real things. Well, obviously the title of this game is Taking the Piss. John George Jones said in an interview with Your Sinclair, I can't stand nice inoffensive things. Soft and Cuddly is for people who are bored with the other lousy games and want something new. In the same tongue-in-cheek interview, when asked what annoys you most, he replied, Games players, I think. They should be shot. He also reckoned Jehovah's Witnesses should be shot, which is fair enough. But in any case, it's clear that he made this game to take the mick and amuse himself. Alright, alright, let's play it. Don't play the game. Ah! Horrifying as it is, this title screen does very much set the mood for the rest of the game. Whoa, looks like Zippy from Rainbow finally snapped and started eating babies. He always did have a killer's eyes. You take on the role of a son of the android queen. The queen has locked up the player's father in a refrigerator, for a reason that is not disclosed. I'm not married, but I expect that most people have wanted to do that to their partners at some point. Now, on top of your dad being locked in a fridge, your mum has also been dismembered by an accident, which means that your dad, stuck in the fridge, is going to become susceptible to being attacked by evil spirits. Oh, it's okay. You've not taken mushrooms. I assume. I mean, what you get up to on your own time is your thing. 
So now you need to go around and find the bits of your mother and stitch her back together again. Kitted out with a gun and jetpack, you need to navigate whatever the hell kind of place your parents live in to save them both. Each room is filled with all sorts of horrific things, like people being tortured on a rack, piles of giant corpses, colossal co-joined babies, traps, spikes, massive zombie heads, and this sheep. Whoa, this guy's parents chose a really interesting neighbourhood to bring up their kid in. I wonder what the schools are like around this place. There really is a lot going on in each screen, and you'll have to keep your wits about you to make sure that you don't get killed. You've only got three lives which run out when your health meter is depleted, and that happens way easier than you'd think. So to start up, the first thing you're going to need to do is find your dad in his fridge. Here he is. Better get him out of there before the council comes to take it away. You can tell this is a fridge because it's the only thing in the game that doesn't look like a fever dream. But the thing is you do need to find the fridge before you can start trying to find parts of your mum. You're looking for her head, limbs and torso. They're usually easy enough to see but not so easy to find. Don't play the game. Do not play the game. Oh, jeez. It's one of those games with difficult to navigate scenery, and for some reason if you hit scenery with your head or scrape along a wall, this will drain your energy. It's also one of those games where everything is chucking itself at you. Mostly it's projectile attacks, but as usual in this kind of ZX Spectrum games, just brushing an enemy will hurt you. And, as is also usual in these kind of Spectrum games, the enemies are entirely nonsensical. Here is a drawing of a small child. Here is a TV. Here is a... <sighs> Set. Looks like this guy's parents live in a bit of an untended neighbourhood, prone to lots of fly tipping apparently. Each piece of your mother you find needs to be taken back to the fridge, and you need to do that one piece at a time. This does get tedious quickly, especially since there are so many rooms and you need to make a mental note of where you've gone. This is the kind of game that will have you scribbling out a map while you play it. Okay, so the decapitated head is here, a uh, lad getting mashed to bits is here, and then there's a crazy bouncing blood sheep here. And moving from screen to screen can be a bit of a nightmare too. There are a number of places where you'll find yourself getting stuck between screens, and you'll be treated to this epilepsy inducing experience. There are some screens next to each other which look exactly the same, and this will confuse you greatly. And if you go too far south, you'll fall into a pit of lava. God, how did the estate agent sell this house to these guys? It's kind of funny how even though you have all of this really gross imagery, the enemies that you have to look out for are actually really cute. Look at the ghost! Look at the little ghosty! Look at the look! Look at the look! Well, that's going to cost me my deposit. Finally, once your mother's body has been returned to the fridge, you need to get a spool of thread needed to stitch her together. So off you go on your final errand, and once you pick it up, you get the end screen. What? Whip me with a banana. Piss off, Horace. What kind of end screen is that? Is that the mother or the father saying that to the kid? Is that the father saying that to the mother? I mean, they do clearly have some kind of crazy BDSM relationship if she shut him in a fridge. Soft and Cuddly got some all right reviews at the time. Crash Magazine weren't keen, giving it only 55%, but Your Sinclair reckoned it deserved 7 out of 10. Other reviewers thought it was sick and tasteless. Personally, while I do think it's worth playing for a diehard Spectrum fan, I reckon it's a bit awful. It is nice being able to jetpack everywhere, but the sheer amount of rooms and having to go constantly back and forth to the same location gets boring quickly. Those random things that float around shooting you have got no pattern, so they're just annoying. The graphics are colourful and interesting, but they are so brazen, so clashing. Obviously that's intended, but it gets too jarring after a while. As far as being a horror game, well, as a modern gamer obviously I'm quite desensitised. But there is some imagery in the game which is kind of disturbing, actually. Specifically, this terrifying head and this horrifying co-joined quadruplets. I mean, you'd have to be pretty thin-skinned to be offended by this, but the fact that they jig up and down constantly gave me something akin to travel sickness. 
Someone calm these babies down, breastfeed them, or slip a bit of rum into their bottle. Just stop bloody dancing. The developer of Soft and Cuddly did actually say in an interview with Your Sinclair that the original version of the game was actually a lot more disturbing. The babies were tearing themselves open, ribs and guts flying everywhere, and the sheep that you see bouncing up and down were bouncing up and down on a body. In fact, you can actually see in the animation where it looks like the top of the body is. But to be honest, I don't really feel like the game missed out by not having those things. This game is the product of a childish mind, which makes sense since the author, like many Spectrum developers, was probably rather young. I couldn't find his exact age, but he certainly looks young in this photo. Soft and Cuddly is basically the game version of the edgelords that you see hanging around 4chan trying to get a rise out of everyone else by posting videos of people being hurt. But if you've got a sick sense of humour then, I guess this game is for you. I can imagine young teens at the time playing this and guffawing about the imagery, and laughing at how much it might offend their mum. If only they knew what the gaming world had in store. Yeah, gory games! One final note about this game is that as a Spectrum tape, it came with an audio track by the band Hex. Powerhouse put audio tracks like this on a number of their games, always on the B-side after the game data. It's a bit of a creepy sounding song, and playing the game with it in the background does give it a bit of a disturbing edge, especially since the recording quality is so bad. I suppose if you hated the game, you still had some music to fall asleep to. Alright, maybe not. Yeah, go on then. You... you played the game. You played... soft and cuddly. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it was a bit gory, but it wasn't scary or anything. Not even especially violent, really, when you compare you it to modern. you realise what you've done? Oh no. Does this mean... I'm gonna become a killer. Do you realise what you've done to society? Am I gonna lock my dad up in a freezer and then go around collecting the dismembered bits of my mum? Oh god no, I I can't do that. I just I don't have the time to do that. I told you not to play the game. Anyway, I don't have space in my fridge, that's where all the white wine lives. No! <laughs> you, no, I want to be a killer! To play no! The game! <laughs> I told you not to play the game! <laughs> I think it's fair to say that I wasn't expecting that. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah.